Okay, I think we'll get started. Good morning and welcome to today's Courses webinar. Today we are going to be talking with Imogen. In fact, Imogen is going to be talking with us all about her um, Ganges expedition with the Nat Geographic, National Geographic. Um, so Imogen, if you didn't see our session last week, is a marine scientist. She got her PhD from Plymouth University researching the sources of plastic in the marine environment and has been involved in lots of cutting edge research in the UK and further afield, part of which will be what we find out about today about the Ganges ex expedition. Um, and is incredibly knowledgeable, and as you can see, she's not only is she a PhD um, uh, scholar, but she's also a young female scientist. So I'm hoping that people today joining us and even watching the video on, on YouTube after um, may get some inspiration from, from Imogen from the work that she's been doing. So Imogen, thank you so much for joining us this morning and welcome. Um, I'll just before I pass over to Imogen to, to take over from the session, I'll just run through how the technology is going to work. So there's a Q&A button down at the bottom, bottom of your screen. If you would like to drop into there and put any questions that you've got for Imogen while she's talking about the expedition itself or indeed about her work and what she does, drop into the Q&A and we'll come to those at the end. If you want to get in touch with us at all during the course of Imogen and chatting, I'll be monitoring the chat box so you can put comments and thoughts in there and I'll be keeping an eye on that and I will share those things with Imogen because she's probably going to be concentrating on what she's talking about but she will also be able to see those as well. You won't be able to see what each other has put into um, the chat which is the most important thing. So just briefly before I do pass over to Imogen, if you don't know who we are, we are the Marine Conservation Society. My name is Jenny Griffiths, I'm Education Manager. We are the UK charity working for the future health of our oceans. We are looking to try and connect the science, the scientists that we have working for us, with the public and the people, whether you are from um, a reception class all the way through to the WI or manufacturers, retailers, MPs, absolutely everybody to try and help people understand how they can be more sustainable in their lives and help to protect our oceans so that it is healthy for future generations. Okay, with no further ado, I will pass over to Imogen to tell us all about her expedition. Imogen, thank you so much. Thank you, and thanks for inviting me back. I'm really excited to share uh, the journey of our expedition. Uh, caveat, because we haven't got any of the research published at the moment, I can't say any of the results, but I can show you how we did all of the lab work, how we collected uh, a lot of the samples, which is half the story. So if I just share my screen. Brilliant, can you see my screen? We certainly can, that's fab. Lovely, okay. So, I most recently went on uh, the Sea to Source expedition as an expedition scientist, which has always been a huge dream of mine. Uh, a little bit of a background about me, my whole research looks at the sources of plastic into the marine environment. And then I was able to join this wonderful mixed group of people about how to try and stop that for a major river system. Uh, how did it all begin? Well, I previously got a grant with National Geographic to look at washing our clothes and different inventions that try and capture the fibres. And then I did a talk there. And it's from doing this talk that I met my bosses, uh, Heather and Jenna, and they invited me to be an expedition scientist, which is really exciting. Like I said, a, a massive uh, dream of mine. And we all had one passion, and that was to try and make the earth healthier. And it all stemmed from this, and this is a, a National Geographic cover. And you can see it's a plastic bag. And at the tip, it just looks like something quite small, a small iceberg. But at the bottom, you can see that there's a greater mass. And that's exactly what the planet or plastic problem is like. We need to tackle the things below the water to make a change. So what did we do? Well, we decided to look at a major river system, and that was the Ganges. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the, the Ganges uh, throughout my talk. And the Ganges goes through Bangladesh and India. So we started at where the river, the river Ganges meets the ocean in Bangladesh, where the river is so wide, you can't see from side to side, all the way up to the Himalayan source, uh, which is so small, it, you feel like you could almost just step over it. So we really saw the whole length of the Ganges. Why were we doing it? Well, rivers can act as conveyor belts for plastic to get into the ocean. Imagine it like a treadmill where a bottle can get into the ocean, uh, the river, and then potentially be pushed out to the ocean itself. And there's a lot of building research looking at river systems. How does plastic get in there? Where does it go? 
And some of the major river systems, such as the Ganges, are predicted to be some of the most polluted. And that's exactly why we partnered up with scientists from Bangladesh and India to try and have a look at the problem. So let's start with how this expedition got planned, right from the start of the planning. But the first thing is we all met each other. There were so many scientists that I've never met or introduced myself to. So the first step was just meeting all of this wonderful bunch of people and learn how all of our skills interact. We had a long two day meeting where my brain was completely fried and we had our end goals. What did we want to get out in terms of research? But then we had to sit down and think, okay, how are we exactly going to do this? What are the logistics? How is the science going to run? We also then had a trial where we had our crazy ideas in our head and we thought, okay, how can we put this into reality? And we trialed all of our different methodologies to see whether they would work. Some didn't work, some did, and some needed refining. But it shows how important just having a trial session is. Then I started getting ready for the expedition itself and it was a pretty crazy time trying to get ready for it. Uh, we had about a month, um, and even though that seems like a long time, just trying to get everything sorted and checked, time really escapes you. Uh, to prove this point, this is me in my hotel room just before I set off on the Ganges first trip. Uh, and I'm still waterproofing and coating some of our equipment uh, with paint. And I haven't even, you know, screwed it all together yet. So I was literally running to the last minute. So let's meet the teams. Now, just to reify, we had two expeditions. We had pre-monsoon and post-monsoon that did exactly the same journey. And we just wanted to look at this, the difference between variations in season. But the teams remain the same. So here is the socioeconomic team that is led by my friend Shush. And the socioeconomic team is learning about people's feelings, perceptions, their ideas, their solutions about plastic. Because remember, the Ganges is not my home. It was not a large majority of our team's home. So the people that know the best solutions and the best input are the people that live there themselves. And this team had some really vibrant, colourful discussions with all walks of life that lived around the Ganges. And they really made some uh, strong friendships. Then we had the land-based team uh, led by Jenna. And they went to um, manage landfill sites, plastic on land. How is it getting there? How is it getting into the river and taking a lot of samples? And unfortunately, a lot of the land around the Ganges was also quite polluted. And then we have our team, uh, which is led by Heather. Uh, we were very lucky that we got to go on the water every day and collect samples and we really were looking at a whole 3D picture of how plastic gets in the river, where it goes. We were also looking at some other things along the way. And last but certainly not least is our logistics team and our logistics team throughout the, the Ganges River expedition just cooked the most amazing meals um, that I would absolutely love to be eating right now. So healthy, so delicious, and they arranged all of our transports. So a huge thank you to them. So now let's come on the journey and see exactly what happened during this expedition. Well, the first things first, you saw me crazily going mantic, and manic, just trying to get everything ready in the hotel room, and then we were at the airport. We had so much science equipment, so much we needed to organise. And here is me and my friend Emily, and we're just praying that we've remembered everything because you don't want to get into Bangladesh or India realising that you've forgotten something at home because you're not going to be able to get it back quickly. Then we arrived. So we arrived in Bangladesh as me and Emily again. And in the distance, you can see our home. So in Bangladesh, we were incredibly lucky to have our home, MV Dinghy, which is that boat in the distance. We lived on there, we showered on there, we ate on there. And then when we were in India, we traveled by road. But this bit was really exciting because it felt like being at sea because the, the river was just so wide. And here's a, a better picture of it, it close up. Um, so it brings back lots of happy memories. And the second deck, where you can see lots of doors, these were our bedrooms, and then down below, that's where the kitchen was, and that's where we ate. We did our washing on board, so constantly, if anyone saw our boat, we would normally have all of our washing hanging from the side. 
but this boat really felt like home and we got to know the crew really well. We also were able to socialise and just that was our chill out space really. So here's us in the mess deck next to the kitchen and uh, we were watching a film. Okay, so we had our main big boat that took us all the way up to India. But for the water team, we always needed to be sampling on the water. So then we had a variety of amazing different boats. So this is me and Emily on one of our boats that we used in sampling in Varanasi, which is one of the middle sites. Um, it was a tourist fishing boat. Then we had inflatable dinghies towards the top where it got very rocky. Uh, and as you can see, just trying to put all of our equipment on that boat is quite tricky. We also had our, our favourite orange boat. Uh, we were with this orange boat for the majority of the expedition in, in India. Uh, it was tight on space, it was very snug, uh, but we, we knew it very well. And here's Sarah, uh, she was doing some data collection at the time and we found our own spaces on the boat where we were most comfortable. Sarah was most comfortable in the middle of the boat, not sitting on the top, but at the bottom. So again, it was very much like home. So we went from where Bangladesh, the, the river meets the ocean in site one, all the way up to site 10. And we did this twice, pre-monsoon and post-monsoon. So what about the water team? What samples were we taking? Well, we were getting that whole 3D picture, like I told you about. And the first bit of that picture was air. Because plastic, yes, is in the air, which still surprises me. Think about what dust is. It's bits of carpet, it's bits of clothing. So our clothing is made out of plastic. So just in the air, we were just trying to figure out how much we could be polluting a river system just from our own atmosphere. To do that, we just had a very simple design, which is two funnels, and the funnels would collect any of the plastic that would settle in there. We would wash water down into the bottle and then pour it over a mesh. So the water would fall through the mesh and the solids would be kept on the top, ready for me to analyze back in the lab. Here's me and my good friend, Sananda, and we are just completing one of the samples. This is me celebrating because, as you can see, the samples are very light, they're made out of plastic, showing again how great plastic is a material. Um, we had this huge storm. Um, I'm terrified of thunder and lightning anyway, so this was a very scary storm for me. And I was also nervous because I thought we were going to lose all of our samples because I thought that they would fly away. And uh, by some sheer amount of luck, we went back the next day and we were able to see that all of our samples remained. So, Thank you, whoever was looking down on us that day. And hopefully this works. This is a stop motion video of us taking the next sample, which is sediment. Um, we're scooping sediments from a sediment grabber, which you can see me doing in the distance there. And then we put it into the bags. Uh, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm in the lab, extracting all of the plastic from sediment to understand how much plastic is actually sinking. So hopefully I can share some of those results for you very soon. And this is my uh, boss, Heather, and she's using a water pump. And what we're doing is we're pumping surface water over a mesh to collect any plastic. So similar to the, the air samples, the water would go down the mesh, through the mesh, and the solids would be left on top. And I've actually just finished uh, sampling all of the water samples. And we should be having our results out in the next few months. So please watch this space. So remember, I've just had air, sediment, and water. So that's our whole 3D picture. And here's me and Sananda completing one of the uh, water samples, sorry. You can see the amazing henna on my hand, which uh, some of the girls did, uh, very talented. Other samples we were collecting, and this was led by my friends, Emily and Sarah. They were looking at the biodiversity of the river. So they were looking at fish, uh, different animals, river dolphins, which are incredible dolphins with really long snouts, and understanding how much uh, plastic could be potentially ingested by them. Then another project, which is led by uh, Emily and Al, we're looking at bottle tags. And we're trying to understand how plastic travels down the river, where it goes, and where it goes when it's out at sea. So with Al's amazing brain, they designed these bottle tags that run by satellites. We chuck them into the river and we watch them float away. And then the data that we get helps us to understand the hydrodynamics and the dynamics of where they're moving. And they've got some really exciting results, which again, uh, look out for, because hopefully they'll be out by the end of the year. At every location, we also had to do a lot of data recording, the life of a scientist. So this is Gaussian Heather recording some of the data. 
so where we were, water temperature, salinity, pH, uh, any interesting things that we need to record, such as if there's been rain or a storm, so that can all affect our results. So we started in Bangladesh where the river was so wide we couldn't see from side to side and we were blessed nearly every night with a glorious sunset and then we finished all the way up in the Himalayas and the river seemed so small you could just jump over it. So we really saw the whole stretch of river. At the end of the expedition, this is me, maybe you can see the bags under my eyes, but this is after we collected our last sample of the whole expedition. So a very bittersweet feeling because I was very sad that it was over, but I was really excited that we had completed such a major expedition. And here is our team at the top, at the last location, celebrating how we had all worked so hard uh, to get the job done. So what's next? Well, I've still got a lot of samples to analyze, especially because of the COVID curveball. So I'm going uh, quite crazy in the lab at the moment, trying to get it all done. And as you can see, Gaussia and Sarah there, we have a lot of samples to get through. Uh, so they're all at home and we carried them home in these metal containers. So uh, just a little bit about the Ganges because the Ganges is such a special place in my heart now. It's an incredible, incredible river that touches so many people. And it's really the veins of India and Bangladesh. It's really lifelines. And they believe that the Ganges River flows from a god. So it's very spiritual and people worship it. And this is in Varanasi, one of the holy cities, and they're blessing the river. We were also really touched and really lucky to get to know uh, the river in such a way. And in Varanasi, we went and watched it from uh, a boat. And it was one of the most magical experiences I've ever had, listening to that music and that light and seeing how much it really meant to people. Another thing amazing about this trip was just meeting people along the way. We went to some really remote locations, really remote villages, and people were so welcoming and interested and just wanted to chat as like we wanted to chat back to them. And this is a picture where we're watching some music before a, a wedding. Uh, we were invited to come and watch. And we can see them playing uh, the drums there. And it was, I can still hear it ringing in my, my head. It was some of the most amazing music uh, and it really touched deep. So as a team, we connected really well. We are really excited about the science that we're going to share. And we worked incredibly hard. And it's all for this purpose. We want to make a change. It's not just the Ganges River that's polluted. There's you know, polluted rivers in England, in the UK, in America but it's helping us just to understand this extra puzzle piece of how we can try and tackle it and tackle it together. And a lot of the trip we were talking about how we could put in our own skills to try and tackle this problem, where we thought the solutions could come from. So this is just a picture I took of one of our uh, workshops where we were talking about that. And you can see we talk about education, which is a lot of what MCS does, which is great build more landfills so they don't, plastic doesn't get into the river, Extent, extended producer responsibility, uh, uh, river keepers networks are kind of like policing the river, build local research capability, uh, how will it benefit them? So we can see we're really thinking about solutions for the whole trip. But the main thing for me was one, the partnerships that we made and the friendships that we'll have for life. And it really taught me that we can't tackle this problem alone. It's got to be with everyone because rivers and the ocean is what connect us all together. So I, I hope you enjoyed our short little journey through the Ganges River. I'm excited to share some of the results with you soon. Um, and I invite any questions that you may have. Jim, thank you so much. That was fantastic. Wow, what an amazing trip. It sounds not only amazing in terms of the research and, and all the, the the results that we don't know about yet but they're going to come out shortly but also the experience um and it just it just looks such like such an incredible incredible place um so i have i've jotted down quite a few questions <laughs> because as you were talking i'm thinking oh my gosh i'd love to know more about this but let's just see if anybody else has any questions so um those of you that are listening live today if you have any questions drop into either the q a or the the chat um, box and pop those in there and we'll get to those and whilst I'm waiting to see if anyone has any then then maybe I'll go to, to, to some of the questions that I've got for you if that's okay and um, why was I was really interested it was the Ganges that you were focusing on and you said at the end that this is a, 
um, an issue obviously that applies to all river systems. Why was that research done on the Ganges? Was that where the funding was linked to or was it, why particularly Ganges? Uh, there's a variety of different reasons. One, just how much the river means to uh, the local population that live around it. It's not saying that other rivers don't have that same connection, but there's a, a really nice story of the Ganges River of it being very holy, uh, it being, you know, affecting so many people transboundary from India to Bangladesh. Uh, it was also scientifically accessible. We had really good connections with the research teams that out there in terms of Bangladesh and India. So all of these Lego bricks just fit, fitted to one and it became the perfect river for all of us to focus on. So are there any plans to do a similar, um, similar expeditions to other major rivers and then compare results in the future? Exactly, so we've we worked hard to get all of this methodology um, ready and we very much want people to take our methodologies forward and use it for other river systems so that we can compare it. So one of the main things in the expedition is actually preparing a methodology document where people can take it and do the same research as us. We've tried to do it so it's quite cheap, uh, quite accessible and easy for people to replicate. Um, so that's one of our, our big deliveries that we're going to have out soon too. So essentially the, the research that you guys have done as part of this trip can be used to be built on and, and the same um, procedures and, and kind of protocols can be followed in another area by another team of researchers. It wouldn't necessarily need to be yourselves and then you're building on, and I guess that's how science works, right? You're building upon the research of other people. Amazing. So how did you go about, you said that you got funding for, for the trip. How did you go about doing that? Was it a funding pot that you applied? I'm just thinking if other people were interested in the future and trying to do the same sort of thing. How would you go about getting on a trip like that? So this one was a, um, a job, so I didn't have any funding for this. I got invited to be part of the team. But the reason I got onto it was some funding from National Geographic, where I got an early explorer grant, early career explorer grants. Uh, so if you have an idea uh, and you want to take it forward, definitely apply for one of the grants that they have. And I'd be more than happy to talk anyone through that. It can be from storytelling to science to... Uh, photography to journalism it really can be anything it's it's you and your idea and taking that forward and then it's from meeting people at National Geographic um, I was just very lucky that the stars aligned at the right time and I was in the right place at the right time to be invited on it um, but there's nothing and, I, and I guess your previous research probably helped you to be invited <laughs> on things as well to be fair Imogen is being very very modest <laughs> it'll be the work that you've done in the past that gets you invited in things like that not necessarily just being in the right place <laughs> I, I would think for sure but oh, amazing I mean I'm just thinking what an incredible trip um, to have in, in, in your mind you're a young person and you're at school studying science at the moment and you're thinking about where that could go in the future I certainly when I was in a classroom wish that I had seen um, examples of, of people like you going on the way and doing such incredibly important research and the research that organisations like MCS then use to do, to do the rest of our work as well. So it's that, that incredible cycle. Um, I have just seen that there is a question down here in the, in the Q&A box um, and it says, would you apply for another grant to go on similar expeditions? Like, would you be interested in doing a similar thing, a part two trip on the Ganges, for example? Oh, definitely. And I, I hope the partnerships, well, I know the partnerships that we made, because they're, they're, we're all such close friends now, uh, aren't going to disappear. And I've got a, a few ideas in my head of how, how to go forward. Uh, so hopefully in the next year, uh, we should see some hopefully interesting things building and bud budding from that. Amazing. And will you be continuing to work for Natgeo moving forwards? Or is that, is that over now and you're moving on to other things? Uh, so actually, I finish this, gosh, this month, uh, technically on the Ganges River, uh, but definitely don't want to stop that relationship with National Geographic going because it's a fantastic community and family to be in. Uh, so hopefully some, uh, again, some interesting things bubbling underfoot. We will we'll keep an eye on what you're doing. We will we'll follow you on, on social media and see what you're up to. So that lead, kind of leads me into my, my next question, which was, how do we get the results? Where can we find those results when they're ready? So. It's going to be a few months because uh, the review, the publishing process, it could, it's just a little bit slow sometimes. Um, but as soon as it's out, I'll be publicising it on all my social media channels. Uh, National Geographic will be publicising it as well, as well as the University of Plymouth. So if probably the best contact, if you're interested, is get in touch with me and I'll be more than happy to share uh, the results when I can. Amazing. And your Twitter handle is at Imogen Napper, isn't it? 
just yet at Imgur. That's what I thought I'd got it right. <laughs> I thought I'd remembered it in my head. Oh, we've got another question. Let's have a quick look. What were the highlights? What were the particular highlights of your trip? Oh, uh, there's so many. Uh, but one of the best feelings was right at the end, we went to a place called Gamuk. Uh, and remember I said that the Ganges flows from a, a god, it's very holy. Uh, but in the Hindu religion, if you go to this place in Gamuk, which is the glacial source of the Ganges, uh, which we were able to see, uh, they believe if you bathe in those waters, that it washes all of your past sins away. And to see so many of our team uh, bathe in that water and just be so excited about the fact that they were there because it's just of such significance in their religion. And they never thought they would have the chance and their families were so excited that they, they got to go. Uh, that was really special and it was right at the end of our first uh, expedition so it was a, a really nice way to finish the trip. That sounds amazing to actually be with teams that I mean you know when you go to places you hear about how the significance but to actually have people that you know um, experiencing that and enjoying that must have been must have been truly amazing. Oh I'm really enthused now I want to go to the Ganges I want to travel <laughs> I want to travel the river and see all of these incredible things. Imogen oh I've got another question I'm just about to say. Are you still in contact with the people that, that you met on the trip? Yes, yes, definitely. We've still got a lot of science to do. Uh, we've got papers budding up, uh, so lots of co-authors. It's a shame because uh, we're all going to meet again to celebrate the end of the whole expedition close-up. But COVID, understandably, uh, but it's definitely not the end and I'll definitely see them again. The, the joys of WhatsApp. <laughs> I guess if they're in, if they're, if these guys are researchers in your field, you will come across each other at some point during another piece of research, potentially in the future. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, does everybody on the expedition go home, go go away and analyse the samples, or does everybody examine different samples? How does that work in terms of splitting up the work when you're on the trip? Uh, depends on the team. Um, so socioeconomic team they've got a lot of questionnaires they need to go through um, they're analyzing it now and i think they're getting some drafts of papers land-based team a lot of their work was um, collecting data in the field so now they're busy analyzing that now and uh, for us we have a lot of lab work but for every institution whether that be in india bangladesh uk us we've all split up the workload um, and it's exciting to see it come together Better. And as you find out different people's results and it all plugs into to the bigger picture, that must be incredible. Imogen, thank you so much for, for joining us and for sharing all of that information. It really has been an inspiration. I'm really thoroughly enthused by the work that you do and I cannot wait to find out what the results are and also to see what you're going to go and do next. Um, because everything that you've done so far is just amazing, amazing in terms of telling us new things that we didn't know before, which is I guess that's the root of science and what it's all about. But it's absolutely amazing. I, I always find it humbling to talk to you and to see the incredible things you're doing. So thanks so much. I know you're really, really incredibly busy. Guys, do follow um, Imogen's work. Follow her on social media. See what she's up to and, and check out these results. We will try and post it on our Facebook group as well um, and share those results when they're out so that you guys can see that. Um, whether or not you're watching live, joining us live or, or the video, on YouTube, of course. And if any, no, it doesn't look like anybody else has any questions. So the last thing that I would like to do before I thank Imogen finally and we say goodbye for today is just to remind people that it is July, which means it's Plastic Free July, which means the Marine Conservation Society are running our Plastic Challenge. To get involved, jump onto our website, mcsuk.org, and check out our information about the Plastic Challenge. We're trying to encourage people to give up single-use plastic or to reduce their use of single-use plastic. This year it's a little bit more difficult because of COVID and restrictions. So anything that you can do to cut down the amount of single-use plastic you use and the single-use plastic that Imogen ends up researching as microplastics later on down the line. So jump on our website and find out more about that. Otherwise, thank you so much once again, Imogen. Really, really enjoyed chatting to you this morning. I appreciate your time. So have a great day. And everybody else, enjoy your afternoon. Thanks for joining us and we hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.